The Gomu Gomu no Mi is not what you think it is. There's a reason why Shanks went out of his way to steal the fruit and a reason why it makes Luffy so special. And now it's time to find out what it is. Because maybe Shanks used the fruit to determine the man who can bring the dawn. Or maybe, just maybe, it's not actually the Gomu Gomu no Mi after all, but a mythical zone devil fruit. Gomu Gomu no Mi Hi there, my name is Manu and as you can tell, I've been on a bit of a streak lately with videos on Luffy. Even though Zoro is my favorite character, Luffy is not far behind for me. And I've made several videos about why I think he's the best written shonen protagonist out there. But recent events in One Piece have me obsessed about Luffy's true nature and powers and how Oda is clearly teasing us with something about Luffy that he's the deliberately holding back right now. For the longest time, it seemed to me like Luffy eating the Gomu Gomu no Mi was merely a coincidence. He was just hanging out with Shanks and his men who had brought the fruit with them and while they were looking away, Luffy took it as a nice little snack in between. Good for you Luffy, eating healthy. Later, Shanks apparently on a whim saw something special in Luffy so he motivated him to become a pirate and gave him his hat as inspiration. And it was only thanks to Luffy's immense creativity that the Gomu Gomu no Mi seemed more than average at best to me as a power. Now everything has seemed to have changed and to me this first chapter of One Piece seems filled to the brim with foreshadowing and setup for the end game of the story. But looking at all that I have to share with you in this video, it's so exciting that I really can't complain. Okay, so with Odin's flashback, we've gotten a lot of new insights into the workings of Roger and his journey to Love Tale. Shanks has turned out to be one of the most influential characters in the story with ties to Roger, the other Yonko, and even the Gorosei. Instead of being a pirate that likes to party and drink most of the time, he's the man pulling the strings on political developments and the future of the world, and still likes to party most of the time. <laughs> As you might already know, I'm convinced that Shanks did not simply show up in Fusha village because he was aimlessly sailing around the East Blue. Shanks was extremely close to Roger and even inherited his precious straw hat. And now we know that Roger and his men came to Love Tail too early and that the Pirate King was waiting for the one who could bring the dawn. <laughs> That's exactly the reason why he created the new pirate era in the first place, to inspire as many people as possible to find it. He then ordered his men to find the right person and guide that person towards the last island to find the One Piece. I'm convinced that that is why Rayleigh was waiting at the entrance to the new world as the only one able to code ships, keeping a close eye on everyone who came through and immediately recognized Luffy for who he was. I Monkey D. Luffy. The reason why Crocus was guarding the entrance to the Grand Line at Reverse Mountain, where he surely recognized Luffy the same way and made sure he found his way onwards. I'm pretty sure he didn't give out a free log post to everyone and explained them how to use it. <laughs> And finally, Shanks was tasked with finding the right member of the D family, not Blackbeard, to inherit Roger's will. I would bet my favorite coffee mug that Shanks actually came to Fusha village to find Ace, not Luffy, the son of his former captain, who was determined on having a son of his own to succeed him. <laughs> <laughs> And it's the same reason he left right away, never to be seen in the East Blue again, right after entrusting Luffy with Roger's hat and sacrificing his arm to ensure he would become the one who could bring the dawn. Whether he actually knew how powerful Luffy would become and how fast and who his parents were, I don't know. However, I will make videos on both Luffy's possible powers after Wano and who his mother might be very soon. So if you want to see those and are a true mad lad, 
please consider subscribing to the channel. And now with recent chapters, speculation around Devil Fruits and more specifically Luffy's Devil Fruit has gotten a lot of fresh winds. From here on out, spoiler warning if you're not caught up to the story yet. Honestly, I was completely shocked when I found out from Who's Who that Shanks did not simply stumble across the specific Devil Fruit, but went out of his way to steal it from the world government itself while it was protected by the likes of CP9. That, together with the reveal of San God Nika, also by Who's Who, which will actually be important later on. And so this now backs the question to me whether Shanks didn't just choose Luffy as the next possible Pirate King because he reminded him of Roger, but because Luffy snacked on the most important fruit in the entire story. <laughs> And so I now want to discuss with you all the exciting possibilities for what could possibly make a rubber devil fruit so special. But before we eat dessert, let's first have some veggies. Let's assume that the fruit isn't special after all. Why did Shanks go out of his way to risk war with the government to steal it if it wasn't super duper important to him? Okay, so one possibility could be that Shanks actually made a bit of a whoopsie when stealing the fruit. Since he seems to have been the only one to be aware of how dangerous Blackbeard truly is, he might well have been aware of his connections to Rocks de Zebek or wherever Teach got the idea for the Yami Yami no Mi from. <laughs> And so maybe the government simply mistook the Gomu Gomu no Mi for its much more powerful counterpart and information about that leaked through to Shanks. And then only after stealing the fruit did he actually realize that he had not gotten his hand on the Yami Yami no Mi after all. Another possibility I could see is that one of the celestial dragons had purchased Luffy's fruit for a lot of money and, I don't know, wanted to use it on one of your slaves, I guess, or whatever weird thing they do. Which is why CP9 was specifically instructed with its transport. But I personally think that Oda wouldn't have gone out of his way to bring Shanks stealing the fruit from the government up like this if it weren't important in some way or form. As I discussed in my character analysis of Shanks, he's usually someone that avoids fighting and conflict at all costs, trying to be like the mediator with pirates and the Gorosei alike. <laughs> So I feel there must be something very special about the Gomu Gomu no Mi for him to actually attack a government ship. I do think that the fruit is special in some way or form and Shanks used it to find the next Joy Boy. So once Luffy had eaten it, there was literally no alternative for him but to bet everything on Luffy. What could possibly be so special about it? I think there are three different options here. Number oh, Number one. It's not about the fruit itself, but who wielded it before Luffy. Number two, the fruit actually has a hidden power that makes it way more powerful and dangerous than it appears. Or number three, the name of Luffy's devil fruit is actually not the Gomu Gomu no Mi at all, but actually a legendary zone fruit. Let's start with one. This is based on a theory of mine about the true nature of devil fruits that I've shared before. If you want to hear my full line of reasoning and proof for it, I suggest you check out that video after. But here's what you need to know. It seems like devil fruits possess a will of their own, some sort of spirit that belongs to the devil that gives its user their powers. This seems to be very likely as we've already seen inanimate objects gaining consciousness by eating a devil fruit. And we do know that the soul is a real and important thing in One Piece from Brooks and Big Mom's abilities alike. Another major theme in One Piece is that of inherited will. And so I suspect that when someone eats a devil fruit, they merge with their own soul and once the user dies, a part of them lives on in that devil fruit. Then, when someone else consumes the fruit, they seem to take on some traits of the previous user. We have for instance seen this with Sabo after eating Ace's fruit, saying and doing the same things and using the same abilities, even though Sabo never really saw Ace use the fruit before. <laughs> Or with Big Mom, who behaves a lot like Mother Caramel after consuming her fruit. Oh, 
The point I'm trying to make here is that the Gomu Gomu no Mi might have belonged to someone very important, someone whose will Luffy now has inherited. The prime two candidates here are of course Roger and Joy Boy. Roger possibly finding the fruit on Love Tail, eating it and then passing away relatively soon after without anyone ever knowing. And indeed only shortly after eating the fruit, Luffy starts saying the exact same things as Roger, something he keeps doing throughout the story. So maybe Luffy inherited Roger's or Joy Boy's will through the Gomu Gomu no Mi and that's why it's so important to Shanks. One thing that I think is really important to address here, if the fruit is that important, why didn't Shanks eat it himself? Well, he stated at some point in the story that neither he nor any of his crew would eat a devil fruit since they all needed to swim. I'm not sure why and what that means, but I feel it will be important at some point. Hey everyone, just while editing the video, I realized that I completely forgot to plug my new subreddit that I just launched. It's called Wild Anime Theories, a place where you can share your best anime and manga theories. We're gonna take the best one of these, turn them into videos for a brand new channel that's launching in February. Oh, and we're also hiring two people a scriptwriter and a thumbnail artist for the new channel as well, so check out the applications in the description below if you're interested. I do write all my scripts here myself, but for the new channel I think that'll just be too much, so just make sure to check it out after you watch this video, the link is in the description below, and let's keep rolling with the video now. Okay, number two. The fruit has a hidden power that we don't yet know about. A possibility here is that the Gomu Gomu no Mi might be the perfect counter to another fruit. We've already seen this happen with Enel, who also wielded an incredibly powerful fruit. And so another good fit for it could be the Gura Gura no Mi, the strongest Paramecia fruit currently wielded by Blackbeard. In theory, Luffy's awakening might be the perfect counter to Blackbeard's abilities. Rubber doesn't break after all. And Luffy as Sun God Nika is the natural enemy of Blackbeard's darkness anyway. One problem with this idea, however, is that the Gura Gura no Mi obviously was still in possession of Whitebeard 12 years ago. So only if Shanks already knew that Blackbeard was after the fruit would that make actual sense. But then again, who knows, maybe the previous user was Rox and Shanks suspected Blackbeard would try to gain it for himself at some point as well. Then again on second thought, maybe the power is not really related to another devil fruit, but what it just can do on its own. Maybe the Gomu Gomu no Mi in some way or form is the key to changing the world, some ability you will need on Love Tail to unlock the One Piece. One idea of how this might become relevant is Luffy's gear third ability that enlarges his body into that of a giant. And as you know, there is a lot of interest in gigantification in One Piece. Everyone wants them, literally. The government, Big Mom, and even Kaido with the numbers. And in general, giants appear a lot in connection to past events. We have a D giant with Saul, we have the giant frozen straw hat in Marijoa, and we have even seen a giant with Luffy's personality with oars. <laughs> so it's quite possible that Luffy's fruit might allow him to turn into a giant, which might be the key to bringing the dawn. The third option is probably my favorite one, though I have to say up front, even for my standards, it is a bit of a stretch. Since we're talking about Luffy here though, that might actually be okay. And it really is an incredibly fun one to think about. This theory is by a Reddit user called The Biggest Wheel, I don't know, maybe a Wheel of Time reference there, who proposes that the fruit the Gorosei are discussing in chapter 1037 is actually Luffy's and that the Gomu Gomu no Mi is just a name that the government came up with to erase its true nature from history. The base of this theory is Luffy's resemblance with the Wisdom King Mio, as well as the introduction of Sun God Nika. Oh, 
both of these gods can be linked to Luffy. And the idea then is that Luffy actually ate the mythical zone devil fruit of the Wisdom King, some sort of Buddhist deity. In this case, basically Luffy's rubber abilities stay the same. However, they're just part of his creature, just like the healing ability for Marco's Phoenix. <laughs> And going off of the latest chapter, that this fruit hasn't awakened in centuries, the author then argues that the original owner of this fruit might have been the very person that was seen as God Nika. In other words, Joy Boy himself. And so maybe Luffy is just awakening this very unique devil fruit right now? I mean, the design of Gear 4th is so fundamentally different from anything we've seen so far from Luffy. Not only does he literally resemble a Wisdom King, but he has three forms of Gear 4th, just like Zone Fruit users have multiple forms as we can see with Chopper. However, the key to this is really another unexplained power that Luffy has. Red Hawk has been pretty much a mystery ever since Luffy was able to use it. And now we actively see him using his fire powers and it's the only attack Kaido has bothered dodging so far. Wisdom Kings are usually depicted with fiery hair, just as the Sun God Nika seems to be. And Oda actually once made this Street Fighter Ken version of Luffy, but Ken clearly doesn't have fire hair. That is actually an addition made by Oda. And the design of the Wisdom King pops up a lot throughout One Piece. We have Enel, who pretends to be a god, this figure during the Fire Festival, and of course King, who has fire powers as well and comes from a race of alleged gods. Nika and the Wisdom King, Shandora and Wano, two nations closely connected through, yes, their history and their ties to the Ancient Kingdom. So I guess the craziest but most exciting option here is that Shanks stole the Gomu Gomu no Mi because in reality it is one of the strongest devil fruits out there and belonged to Joy Boy himself. But even if we assume that the Gomu Gomu no Mi is just the rubber fruit, there are still a lot of great possibilities for Luffy's awakening. And there's a lot more to learn about devil fruits in general, so check out either of, the two, of these two videos right here.